It's time. It's time, ladies and gentlemen, that we talk about why it is I'm so excited about this industry again. I've talked about the company that I'm the CEO of many times recently, not up until recently because it's just almost impossible to do these episodes without having some kind of narrative about why we think the way we do and why I think the way I do and what's become of that. So we're going to fill in a lot of blanks. We're going to talk about this company one time and that will make sense of a lot of things I've said in the past and will also help to fill in the gaps going forward. We're going to talk about the company that I'm the CEO of, NextGen MedStaff, on today's edition of Travel Evolved. This is Travel Evolved. I'm Mark Holloway, CEO, ironically, of NextGen MedStaff. And today we're going to talk about NextGen MedStaff. There's no other way to talk about this besides, you know, turning it into, it's not going to be a promotion of NextGen MedStaff, but it is going to give you guys some insight as to what invigorated me three, over three years ago now, to start this company and to create this concept because it just made sense. And I'm hoping that after today, you'll understand why we think the way that we do. You'll understand why we even created Travel Evolve because it had a lot to do with this and why being open and transparent just goes hand in hand and having educated travelers listen to Travel Evolved makes companies like the one that we created and that we are so excited about make sense for the traveling healthcare world and why things that are have been done in the past no longer really makes sense because it's it's time for a change. So that's why we created this. You know, again, this was a relatively recent decision. We had this episode, but we didn't know when we were going to do it. It actually was an episode like a few of ours there are that are kind of off to the side that we didn't know when we wanted to do it. And as you guys know, uh, I guess mainly mainly maybe 15 episodes ago, it hasn't been that long that I actually started mentioning Next Gen Med stuff. I, even, I didn't even use the company name for the whole first season and most of the second season on purpose and I really didn't think we were potentially ever going to pull that episode aside because I didn't want to turn Travel Evolved into I didn't want it to lose credibility and have it become oh so this is all about that because obviously we wouldn't have done almost 100 episodes just for this it's meant to inform you but here's what I love about it and I'll repeat this again a few times having giving complete transparent knowledge there's literally nothing that we won't talk about openly and Ask anybody that works for us out there, any healthcare traveler, the same thing applies because it works. It makes sense. We are done with secrecy. We are done with hidden numbers. If it's all out there, not 99% of it, all of it is out there. A company like NextGen MedStaff, and I think there's going to be others that probably are. I don't know of any that are this open, but I think it's coming. It'd be nice if there were. It makes sense. If there's no secrets and you can know everything, then truly wouldn't the more educated a traveler, be a better fit. So again, this is all, it just started making sense. And I said, guys, I think it's time. And I felt like this would be the perfect time, episode 99, one episode shy of our, of our you know, second, end of our second season, which we'll finish next week. It just started to make sense. And that's why we're doing it. So today I want to tell you a little bit of history of, of what the idea was, why we were frustrated, and kind of move into it. So I, I hope you stick around and listen because... You will hear what we're what we're doing now. I'm not going to give away every secret yet because, by the way, not just travelers are watching this. Every every recruiter out there, every person that they know, they've taken this to their higher up and said, "Oh, you got to watch what he's doing." So, it's not going to change what we're doing, but I, you know, I also don't want to give away the secrets. And here's really why: I don't want our competitors to take 
an honest, good idea that we think is going to help travelers and with their influence, try to figure out how to compromise it and make it benefit them, which is what you kind of see with apps right now. And I'll get into that in a little while. Most apps right now are just a faster way for the companies to get you working for them and making money, but they don't really offer you any additional income yet. That's, I mean, for those of you who use apps, look at it and say, isn't it just a faster, easier way for me to basically recruit myself and get in front of them quicker? And for the most part, it is. Um, like I say, I think things are going to change, but that's what we saw. So let's talk a little bit about some history and, and how things kind of came around. I'll tell you this, I'll start kind of with this, and I'll go back further than this, but I'm going to start off with basically January of 2020. COVID had just hit, but if you remember in January of 2020, it wasn't even very well recognized that it was actually COVID, if you remember. There was some hints of it. It was just the very beginnings. And we had already we already started and decided what we were going to do because prior to that, in very, very late 2019, I was about done. I'd been in this industry at that point for 20 years, and I was consulting, not really by choice. And I'll tell you this story because it's interesting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep names out because it doesn't matter. I'm not, I don't want to hurt anybody. I'm not trying to make any company look bad. But what I saw was validation of things that I always had talked about. And most of you guys know that in the previous life, I felt this, and I'll tell you this much. I always felt, wouldn't it make more sense to create a company that we could go with the thinnest margin and have our, our, our pay rates be what people started talking about? Because I knew how much you guys talked. And I wanted to take advantage of it and say, well, let's give them the best pay package. Now, I'll tell you, with the model of recruiters, I found that some, there was some difficulty in that. We did everything we could. And, and, and a lot of my competitors, and especially a few of them, know that we were at exactly a 20% margin when everybody was saying the word 20% like it was some magical thing. And I'm talking about 2016, 17, 18, 19. Nobody was at a 20% margin. And I, I can tell you, and again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to do what, what some of my competitors didn't do and keep their names out of it, which I'm going to take the high road. I'd like not to. And some, at some point, I probably will tell some full stories on some stuff. But companies that were saying that we're at, they were at 20% margins looked at our margins that we were paying people and they didn't like the 20% that we were making because it wasn't really 20% for them. We were keeping a lot less of the pie and that was proven and I can go into detail. I'm not going to today. But in 2020, what was happening for me, and I'll, I'll just kind of talk about the pandemic because this is where it really became front and center. We already we already had our concept and our idea and there was already a reason why and I'll get into that. But I was, I was in, I'll say this much, I was in Florida the, pan, the pandemic, I may not have been there, I may have been on a conference call, I don't know, but I was working with a group out of Florida, and the pandemic was hitting. And this was an innocent thing. It wasn't meant to be vicious, whatever, but I was dealing with it with a small company, and the rates were starting to get higher. And what we were noticing was, so were the margins that, that we were seeing from this, you know, this group, for, for example. And it kind of made me sick to my stomach because if you guys remember, and it's, we work in such a, I mean, live in such a fast-paced world right now that we forget things that happened three months ago, especially with the way their media is. They'll beat up something, and then if it's not right or whatever, even if it is right, they're on to the next hot thing. That's what, that's what drives advertising and drives viewership. So old news becomes old news. So many of you may not remember, especially if you weren't one of the first people to jump into some of these early positions, that in January, if I'm not mistaken, when people were heading out to some of these very early assignments, and I'm, I'm thinking New York, remember that, that whole hub in New York? Most people really felt that they were walking right into the face of danger, and they probably were because there was no PTO, and all, or that, you know, that, that they, had, they didn't have a lot of programs and systems in place. I used the wrong acronym. But they were literally kissing their loved ones goodbye and going to New York, not really knowing the danger. And I think the danger was either real or it certainly was inflated, but it, it, it was real because we didn't have any knowledge and we didn't know what we were dealing with. And I'm talking about as a, as a nation. You guys probably knew more. Do you remember those times? It was it was really brave and um, lucrative. I mean, I'll throw that out there, and it doesn't mean those two can't go hand in hand, but people that were jumping into that early front line were were really, in my opinion, were, were kind of heroes. I mean, and the media for the first time started talking about traveling healthcare. It's been a, an industry that really was not very well known. Anytime I talked to my friends about what I did, they were like, what? They didn't get it because no one knew what, what we did, people outside of the industry. That's, that's kind of true. 
At that point, people started to hear about, I think mostly nursing and ICU and, and telemetry type nurses that were going to critical care, that, that this thing called travel nursing at the time actually existed. It really never got a lot of national attention except for a story here and there. And I think it, it went over a lot of people's heads. But for the first time in our history, in my opinion, a lot of the, you know, people in America started understanding that there was a thing called travel nursing in this case and that people would go and leave their job. I, I think they were confused that it was just for the pandemic. The point I was making was that innocently, this, this small company was talking about the amount of money that people were making. And an innocent, again, I, I know it wasn't, it's innocent, but it's not. The question arose from very high up and maybe the top, well, does it, well, does it matter what our margins are? Can't we increase our margins and make more money because the healthcare professional is gonna be making so much money that they may not be paying attention. And since we are one of only a handful of companies, it looks like everyone else is offering the same thing. And it made me sick to my stomach because I was already disgusted with the industry. I'd already had enough. I said, this is not the kind of industry I want to be involved in anymore. It, it had turned into, and I'll just use a phrase that is not really accurate, but the good old boy kind of thing. Spinoff after spinoff after spinoff of a couple of hubs around the country where everyone was doing the exact same thing. And everyone had the same model and they all knew each other. It was a lot of inbreeding, for lack of a better word. And it just was higher ups at one company would get upset with, with their owners and they would spin off and then do their own thing. A lot of that was going around. So it was just little micro mirror images of what was becoming a very greedy and, I mean, lack of a better word for this is just yucky. It was a yucky industry. And it started to make me less and less proud that I was involved in it. And I always tried to have integrity and do the best we could. And it just didn't work out because with thin margins, you got a lot of payroll out there and you got a lot less AR. So you have to have more more backing, a lot more, as I found out. You've got to have money, 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 which is what most companies do. They sell their soul and they give up 70% of their company and then they're, they're owned by the, you know, the big people, the money, and, and it, it works, but you lose your intentions, which I think a lot of people that start their own agency realize real quickly. The point I was making is that it was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back for me. Here it is, people that are literally at that point, and the pandemic did turn into a money-making thing for everybody. I think the danger aspect seemed to kind of go away. And I'm not trying to downplay that. Please don't misunderstand that. I'm just saying that as time went by, it was more about need. And I think if I'm if I can speak for some of you, you felt less like your life was in danger. And it was more about the danger of the long hours you were working and the conditions and that the things that you were doing and having, you know, ventilators in areas that weren't supposed to be in and things like of that nature. But I think overall, from what I heard from most of you, was that the money got greater and the danger was enough that more and more people joined. I hope that's a fair thing to say. And I'm not trying to downplay anybody that was in a very dangerous thing for most of it. But that's what I was being told is that more and more people jumped in because we knew what we were doing. We had safety measures in place. The money was still great. The demand was outrageous and you guys made money. But at the beginning, that wasn't the case. So I had two things happening at once. I had a company getting greedy that I knew very well. And I, and it, and I had people that were literally putting their lives on the line at that point, I would say, and they didn't care. This didn't care that this was happening. It was all about money, and it just made me go, I'm done. I am done. I can't do this anymore. Let's open up a bar. Or let's move you know, somewhere and, and figure out a, a different way to, to, to go off in the sunset. And I, would have been, I was really happy with that. That was a long lead up. But I wanted to know what was in my head because it just I was tired of this. It, you guys know that agencies are kind of like the, the, the evil empire for a lot of you. They're the necessary evil. That's the way you guys treat agencies. I understand that more than anybody else. I, I actually um, kind of take that in, in to heart, and I think it's good that you guys think that way because it makes a lot of us try to do better for you because we want your business, and not, you know, whatever. Let's be transparent about everything today. So at the end of the day, um, I'd had an epiphany, but... That, that was kind of it for me. I said, I don't know. And it was it for me for doing that. And then it's almost kind of turned on itself. And I said, now I really got to do what I, what I said I was going to do. Because here's what I said. A few months earlier, I said, there's got to be a way that the model I tried to work with before could even be improved upon. And which meant was, how do I pay travelers more money? I know it's going to sound weird, but just bear with me. I felt still, and I still do to this day, that there was a huge demand in the market for a company that could pay you more. 
Then the pandemic hit, and I was actually proven correct before we even had a chance to even basically form a company and, and you know gain a bunch of capital and, and, and acquire what we needed. So it kind of proved my theory. I said, I felt at that point early in late 2019 that people were less and less brand loyal, if that makes sense. And I said, if you could come up with a company that could literally kick the pants off of everybody it, with a pay rate, wouldn't that make sense? And the only way I knew to do that was literally to have an incredibly thin margin and to get a whole bunch of money. And I said, that's not really realistic, but it could work. I just gave somebody an idea. Again, how to, but it's, it would still help you guys. No, instead I said, the only way I can think of to do it, you can't raise the bill rate with hospitals. That You can't be competitive. If you had more, if you asked hospitals for more money, you wouldn't be able to pay the, you'd be able to pay the traveler, but you're not going to get any contracts. And it dawned on me, I said, we've got to cut our operating expenses. And I knew exactly where to cut them. I, I said, we've got to cut the recruiting out. And then I said, oh my God, we've got to come up with a completely recruiterless model and a, recruiters, a recruiterless app that kicks butt and is perfect and transparent and gives them everything they need and then I've got to educate them on let's move into 2020 at that point and let's realize that this industry is a dinosaur and that empower the travelers that they know what they're doing and they truly actually don't need to have a recruiter which should mean they can be paid a lot more money so we off we went I want to share a story with you um, that happened in early either early 2019 or in late 2018 I was running a company. We had quite a few recruiters, maybe 15 at the time. <clears throat> the top guy, kid, came into my office, ghost white, one day. This story, I think, is says a lot. And this is absolutely truth. And I said, what's wrong? And this was a recruiter that was, he was, you know, in his early to mid-20s, but he, he kind of teared up a lot on things. It was kind of hard and, you know, as a... As a I like to think I'm a tough guy, but I got a son who plays hockey, and he learned not to even. You guys know hockey players; they they will not let you know when they're hurt and that sort of thing. So it was kind of hard sometimes to see what I felt was kind of like a grown man, kind of get weepy and a little teary eyed to me. And he came; I knew it was one of those days. I'm like, oh god, here we go. I'm not good with that, with with a, with a guy. I'm just going to tell you. I just I, I wish I was, but I I, I, I it, it's hard for me. It's hard on me. So I get kind of I don't know. But I said, what's the matter? What's going on? And this is exactly what he said we're all going to get replaced by an app someday. And he was really upset about it. And I said, no, stop it, stop it. That's ridiculous. This is a customer service industry. I, I've heard you know stuff like that beforehand, but this is the first time he said he saw something out there on the internet. Who knows that that's what was going to happen down the road. And I instantly defended and said, no, never going to happen. And I made him feel better. I said, don't worry, it's a customer service. You can't replace what you guys do with an app. This is a, a, a customer service industry and nurses and allied professionals need a recruiter to help them in times where they do need. And I, and I really felt that, I thought. He went out and my first reaction when he left my office was, holy cow. My reaction wasn't because I was so adamant. My reaction was because it scared the hell out of me. And I want to tell you guys that because I knew right then if somebody did that, my entire model that I built and all the, the expenses I had and, and the, the lease I'd sign and the, and the salaries I'd guaranteed would all have to change. And I would have to completely change everything I knew to try to overcome that. And I was scared that I wouldn't be able to. And it scared the living daylights out of me. So now fast forward to you know late 2019. I'm working out, of course, because I'm just, that's where I think a lot. And I was th talking about this, this idea of reducing the operating expenses. And as soon as I, as soon as I said recruiter, my next thought, recruiter list, I had to get rid of them. My next thought was, of course, it's an app. So it's really ironic. I remember saying to somebody relatively recently that I knew someone would develop an app. I can't believe it's actually going to be me. And then I immediately said, no, of course I can. Of course I can believe it's me. Of course it's going to be me. And here's why. Because I was in a unique situation. I had 20 years of experience and I didn't I wasn't entrenched running a company at that moment, which was actually seemed like the most horrific thing in the world to me, but was such a wonderful blessing cuz there was nobody else I knew that had this opportunity to be able to say, I can take 20 years and create something because I can't, I am free of that old recruiterless model. And then the gears started turning. And we started talking to investors and we started talking to other developers and it just kept moving from there. And I'll, I'll kind of keep going on this. But the epiphany came and it made instant sense to me. 
it was one of those moments that I think everyone has in their lives. And for me, this is the only time I've had it so far where everything came together in about 20 seconds and it all started making sense that how lucky I was that this industry was actually a dinosaur and it hadn't happened yet because what are the chances? Every other industry had moved into technology and it actually had improved itself because of that. But here's travel healthcare chugging along at the same slow pace it always has since its inception, which has a lot to do with the way hospitals work and all that stuff. So I was incredibly lucky that I was in that industry, I had that much experience, that I was available to start something new at the time, and that we knew exactly, not even close, but exactly what needed to be done to create this, this idea. And so off we went. So. That's quite a long story for the background, but I wanted to kind of give you guys a real good sense of where we came from because if you've ever had a moment like that in your life, it's it feels like a lightning bolt hits you. And I, I can tell you, I've never had that before, and I, I don't think I'll ever have it again. But it was, I, I can imagine, there's things that I've heard you know, from other people that they've had those kinds of moments. But that was it for me. And it all came together so quickly that we knew exactly what we had to do. And, and so... We went and got some money and, and off we went. So here's what we wanted the app to accomplish. I'm gonna walk, I'm, this is what we were looking for. We wanted an app that would instantly be able to tell anybody what is their specific specialty, a job when it became available, the details on that job, and most importantly, the pay rate, which we wanted to have associated with the GSA and we said, let's let's have that coordinate so that it would take the amount that you could take tax-free, knowing people would hopefully listen to this and know that they didn't have to take it all tax-free, but give them those options, but instantly show them full details without having to send a bunch of paperwork in. It had to be reliable. It had to be able to do that from multiple vendors and multiple sources, instant, accurate, and it had to notify you on your iPhone or your Android the, the instant a new position came in. Doesn't sound like much, right? It seems like that's pretty pretty normal. So the concept itself was pretty was pretty pretty reasonable in my opinion. And of course, I always knew that first of all, I'm not a developer. So I said, what I want may sound simple and it may be incredibly typical. It may be impossible. I didn't really know what I was talking about. But this is what I wanted. So I had to go find people and individuals that would spearhead this and say, do you want to be a part of this? And I did. And I got lucky. And I'm not going to go into details because I can't yet for employment reasons and other things that are part of it. But I got really lucky. And I got lucky with a good friend who I knew was brilliant and uh, I trusted and got the concept right away without, sorry, without even understanding truly what travel healthcare was about, but understood that there was not anything like it yet, the opportunity, and wanted the challenge of being able to tackle how to make that happen. So, you know, you just never know relationships that you have and how it's going to turn into different things. And, and knowing a lot of people, I mean, like I said a couple episodes ago how important relationships are where, for your mental health. Well, one of my relationships turned out to be... Um, lightning in a bottle in my opinion so that was the concept and it went further from there and I don't want to get into a lot of detail but I want you guys to understand that the idea was zero salesmanship zero recruiting we said let's give everybody full details let's have it be universal across the board there was no adjustment in our in what our margin was let's start off low and see if we can make it even lower based upon more and more technology and that started to you know get us brainstorming but if it could be completely transparent where here is everything and it was up to the buyer, you guys, to buy or don't buy. And we could explain to them, this is all predicated on a bill rate. So if a bill rate, if a pay rate looks low, it's because the bill rate is low. And that means that facility is expecting to be able to fulfill it at that rate. And if it's too low for you, it just means it's not your job, but it might be a job for somebody else. No discrepancies, no discrimination. Here it is. This is what we're being told. And here's what we're, what we're showing. And let the consumer the traveler who knows what they're doing decide for themselves whether or not that job makes sense to them and be okay if it doesn't. Gear started turning again. It definitely was my, my insistence that we did not require much of anything to be able to see those pay rates because I said 
I want to be proud of these rates. I want to kill everybody in the rates. I want to be the top paying company, not one of the top paying company. Hadn't figured out how to do that quite yet, but that's what my dream was. If I could be the top paying company, then I think we'll get more business just naturally because why wouldn't someone want to make more money? And I harp on it a lot here, but it really made sense to me even back then. If we could have everything different, why wouldn't it make more sense? Now I knew that we were had our biggest hurdle is going to be the concept itself and having travelers go, oh, I don't know about that. We'll talk about that in a minute. But I said, I, w I don't want people to have to send resumes, register, go through a whole process just to see our rates. I'm tired of that. And people have told me, and again, this is all based upon 20 years experience, guys and gals. It was because you guys have told me for years that that's such a pain in the you know what, and you hate it. So let's not make you guys do that. Let's have this company be different, where if you don't like what you see, and you know, then you wouldn't you wouldn't say yes and, and start the process. But let's figure out a way that you we think you would like what you see, and let's show you here's exactly what it is, and never deviate from a penny once we actually get you know that person booked to the penny, and let's make sure it's transparent and open and based and predicated on the actual bill rate, the GSA, the formula. Everything's tied into everything perfectly, and here it is. What do you think? Do you want it? Great. If you don't, if it doesn't make sense, we're going to pass. And there's going to be nobody at the company that's going to be upset that's not making commission because there is no commission. You're not going to break anybody's hearts because that's what you do. And that's I, go, I know you guys feel that way. I know you guys feel bad often when you're working with a recruiter and some other recruiter sweeps in and finds something different or the same deal at a better price. I know you guys don't like to tell that first person, that you're going with another company. I don't think that's fun for anybody. And you guys have hearts, and you know you're hurting somebody, and you know you're taking commission away from them, and you know that they worked hard. In this case, there's none of that. It's up to you. So the concept kept going and continuing. But I was the one that said, and I made that decision right away, I do not want, I want to make it very easy for people to see the positions. And then we said, okay, we gotta have a beta test. We gotta actually get feedback. So that was my first quest. While they were developing the, you know, the coding and the actual app and the way it was going to look in the whole nine yards based upon what I wanted, I went out and started looking for people that liked the idea and the concept. And that was step one. After, of course, we got the money, we formed the company, we raised the capital. And we raised a lot of capital. Actually, at the beginning, we didn't raise as much as I wanted to. We actually started before we, we had to start before because we were running out of time and I just needed to get going. We, we had to go raise a lot of money a, quite a bit later, but we knew we had enough to start just to be, again, completely transparent. But we wanted to at least get the, get the app developed and start the beta. And we didn't expect to you know, actually book anybody without, a, without an app, and it turned out we did. So that's what we did. My quest is really go out there and start to take what I thought was a great idea, you know, a brilliant idea. I can, you know, I'm the smartest man alive, and, and see if I was right or wrong. And that was the first step. And what was really interesting is more often than not, people were pretty excited about the idea. They liked it. When I was given a chance to explain it to people, and that's, guys, that's what I did. I actually got on the phone and made some phone calls out of you know names and numbers that I had and started saying, here's what we're trying to do. What do you think? And would you be interested in, in helping us give some feedback and, and you know on appearance and the app itself once we have that developed? Would you give us some suggestions on things we wanted to improve? I wanted this to absolutely be traveler float focused and as it turned out I wanted it also I didn't know at the time but it turned into where I wanted it to be traveler designed I wanted the traveler to tell us what we wanted not us tell what you know what the traveler what we thought it should do and that's exactly what we did so it was really kind of a unique thing and, and the overwhelming initial response was very very good I did get some people that just didn't get it and I was fully expecting that I was not expecting hundred percent of people say yes this is gonna be great you got it there's a lot of people like ah, I don't know I'm not interested in, in, in doing that. And I was fine with that because I wanted people that were excited as we were. But I will tell you that when I was able to get on the phone and say to people exactly what I said to you guys just now, but in about two minutes, I talked quick and I had to talk really quick to get the idea across. And those of you that watched me that are part that were part of that beta test, first of all, I know I've thanked you on text and I've sent emails expressing my gratitude. I, I'm incredibly grateful for you to you guys because we we got a lot of ideas from you. We validated more of them because you know again we all of us came or a lot of us that were on this side came from the industry and we thought we knew what it would need. 
turns out we were right on a lot of it. So there was a few things that maybe we didn't need. There was a lot of great suggestions. We kind of overlapped in a lot of stuff. So it was a lot of validating. And I, and I do know that some travelers gave us some amazing ideas that we hadn't thought of that really also made sense that either are incorporated or are going to be down the road. So I'm incredibly grateful for those of you. If I have anybody, and I don't know because we can't tell. I know people follow us on YouTube and our podcast, and I know there's some people that started off with that, with that beta. What was interesting, and I'll just share this with you guys, is that we actually had people go to work for us on the beta before we even had an app on the concept itself. And I, I'll tell you how rudimentary it was. Um, in the beginning, we had a group of people that were actually physically texting from our phones to the beta test, and we told them this was happening. It wasn't an app. We were texting. You know, They were telling us what they wanted. It's, it's funny to think about now, but we had to do it this way. So imagine this if you could. We have no app. People are interested, so we said, what we're going to do over the next couple of months while we're still developing the initial phase of the app that we'll let you have in a beta test form is we're going to actually, you know, you tell us where you want to go, specialty, and we're going to text you manually as these jobs come in. And, of course, the list was this big. Then it became bigger and bigger and bigger. That's what we were doing, and they knew we were doing it. And they said, yeah, put me in front of that job. And we asked them for the stuff we needed, and then we put them in front of that job. But we were texting them the rates that are, you know, we could be able to calculate those by, you know, by a, a, basically a model that we developed that ended up being, you know, incorporated into our formulas. But it was fascinating to me because we were getting people booked, and we didn't expect that. We were trying to develop an app, but there was so much interest that we started saying, well, what are we waiting for? Let's get some people going. Let's start generating some revenue and, and use some of that revenue to help develop our app so we can actually get going faster. And that's exactly what we did. And it was remarkable. And it was during the pandemic, so a lot of the rates were amazingly high. And of course, I've said this before, because we were working on thinner margins, and I will tell you, we started at 20% because that's the number I knew, but real 20%, not 20%. And then, you know, all the credentialing on top of that and everything else. It was after that, that was it. We incorporated all that in, so it was, it was our 20% and all of our cost of goods sold came out of that 20%. It wasn't before that, if that makes sense. So it was less than 20%, which is what those other companies were saying they were, but theirs was the other way around, so theirs was 23 24%. So we really did start at a 20% margin. So what I'm getting at is the bill rates were so high that the discrepancy between what we were paying for the jobs we had, and we barely had any, were were a thousand fifteen hundred dollars a week difference than everybody else's, including the companies that we found out had kind of a similar web-driven type model. That was a disappointing day. We had this great idea. We're developing it, and now also we realized that there was a couple of companies that were doing a recurrentless idea, but it was all web-driven. So we were disappointed that we hadn't thought of the only thing like that. And of course, we we realized instantly that how silly would we be because everyone's always looking for better ideas. Other people that aren't entrenched in their industry, I also found out that most companies didn't want to look for better ideas, but there were people out there that were smart enough to realize that this idea would work and it wasn't just us. So there's some validation there, but we were also happy that it wasn't simply an app. And we actually said, let's not do a web-driven website like this because we want it right on, right on, right on their phone because this is what we felt was the, was the key, that the token was this, not a laptop or a combination. Let's do it on this. We wanted an app only. But think about that for a minute. We had people that were so excited about this that we didn't even have them a shell of an app to even offer them, but it was the concept. And they knew what we were doing and they said, yeah, let's do it, I'll, I'll jump on with you guys. And they knew, they, they it was weird because a lot of companies try to pretend they're bigger than they are at the beginning because they don't want people to think they're the first ones. These people knew they were the first ones. But bless their hearts, and again, I don't want to name names because I don't I didn't ask permission. Some of them, by the way, believe it or not, are still with us today. We had a lot of people, you know, go and come and that sort of thing. But there are a number of people, over I think a dozen, that started at the beginning or during the beta test phase that actually are still with us or back with us again because we've now gained more and more positions. We, we just had a couple of, really we had one pretty major system and, it, and I reached out to a couple of acquaintances that I knew that, that were some other vendors and we absolutely will jump on with you and we'll let you jump in. I will tell you guys this on a side note, for those of you that are thinking about starting your own company, that was when I learned that things had changed, that you couldn't just be persistent and make a lot of phone calls and get contracts from vendors. You actually had to know who you were. And I was fortunate that people did know who I was. And they, they knew what we had done in the past and companies that I was involved with had done in the past and that we had delivered. And they said, yeah, you kicked butt with us. We will take you again in a heartbeat. And I was really grateful for that because I, I didn't expect that. 
because it used to be that you just make a lot of phone calls, you'd get, you'd get involved in these vendors. So I did learn that then. And I've told travelers that have said, you know, it's usually travelers that want to start their own agency, that that's going to be your biggest, toughest hurdle right now is that they kind of want to know that you know what you're doing or they, it's just, it's more difficult. And I learned that because we didn't get everything and we didn't want everything because we didn't want to have more jobs than we could deliver for, if that makes sense, until we actually had an app. So that's what was so crazy is we had people working for us during a beta test without even having an app. And I just think it was, I don't know, it was just kind of crazy. Now think about this. The other thing that was happening at the same time, we're trying to develop an app and, and kind of, we were so excited about this concept and it's right in the middle as the pandemic is starting to rage. So this whole time where we're creating a beta test and we're trying to develop an app and it, we don't even know what it looks like at this, you know, where I'm at right now, the pandemic is raging and everyone's either, their business is going through the roof, they're going crazy, or people are, are we got a bunch of new travelers. And that's the, the interest and the excitement out there from you guys. It's, it's really not about a recruiterless app at this point. It's about, I wanna just, just make some money. So the timing probably couldn't have been worse, but it was interesting because it was it was showing how you guys had started to get more educated. I think a lot of travelers changed and a lot of the old guard finished and retired or, or decided they, that it was too much. They didn't wanna work that hard anymore. They just didn't wanna be a part of it. And I do know that the overall pool of traveling healthcare professionals, in my opinion, I think more came in and, and then, then more left than we had before. So it changed over to a majority of the travelers in 2020 until now, I think are more new than, than have been around for a while. A big part of people did. We kind of, we kind of see that because we can see what, how many long people have been traveling. So it was kind of interesting. So it was, it was fantastic to have kind of all these things happening, but it was also sometimes very frustrating because it was becoming ugly out there. There was a ton of money and this is where I started to validate when I could see the rates that we had and what the offers were, it was when I talk about the fact that I know that companies were increasing their margin, this is how I know. I can tell you guys now, it was because we had the same contract and our margin at 20% was ridiculously higher than what we were seeing on Facebook and all these places they were advertising and even on some of those websites, it was like, wow, they are really thickening their margin and they're offering less and less because they're looking at what the competitors are doing. They're trying to stay consistent. It's like, it's like the gas wars. Everyone wants to, you know, if the guy in the corner has a gas at this much a gallon, you're going to keep it right around the same because, you know, maybe you'll go a little bit lower. But if he's going to raise, you're going to kind of raise too because you want to make as much money. That was what was kind of happening out there. And we saw it. And when I tell you that I know it was happening, this is how I know because I had the same bill rates. And I couldn't explain that a lot or I never have before. But that's when, I, when I'm so, when I'm so, I guess, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm so uh, arguing about that fact that I, that this was happening. It's because I, I know, I saw it. And it got worse and worse as the rates went higher. And it was to the point where it looked like companies were trying to figure out what's the least we can pay on this deal and, and thicken our margins. So when I see travelers that were saying that you know agencies were making close to 40% of the thing and people that really knew how the numbers worked, they were right. The only thing that kind of threw a curveball in is that a lot of travelers weren't thinking about how the tax-free amount kind of stayed the same. So the more taxable dollars, in other words, the bigger that, the, what was growing was the taxable dollars, right? Because we were all maximizing the tax-free. So that was growing, which was costing the agency more and more of a taxable payroll burden on those taxable dollars. So that kind of did come into play a little bit, but it was still, it was still obviously high. We knew we were in the right, the right thing. And so basically what happened is we, we, got, our, we got our app out in a shell and the first thing that we, we loved about it was that it was simplistic. And at first I was disappointed, I will tell you guys. I saw it and I was like, ah, it doesn't seem like it. The feedback overwhelmingly was, I love how easy it is to see and read. And we said, and it, by the way, that, that opinion has not changed to this day. Most people that download our app on iTunes or Google Play say, the first thing I noticed is that it's really simplistic. It's not complicated and there's not a bunch of stuff. It's just easy to read and bam, here it is. And that was important to us. So. Things started working. Of course, of course, we had some hiccups. Of course, we had some things that weren't, you know, populating and, and, you know, again, specialties that one vendor would call this weren't coding properly. This so there was a lot of glitches. And again, I gave that to, you know, the powers that be, the, the, my lightning in a bottle guy, and he fixed it. And that's what he's brilliant at. I said, here's what's happening. So, the way our relationship is, is I, I tell him what I want and why. It's, it's important, and then he goes and figures out how to do it. Because it's always, I think it's easy, and it never is, because I'm not, a, I'm not an engineer. 
So that's kind of how, how, it, how it all started coming into place. We, we started to get feedback from the, you know, from the beta group. We started to say, you know, I guess, add more and more bells and whistles, streamline some things down. Of course, we had a lot of you know, bugs to fix during the whole course of the time. If it could go wrong, it went wrong. I think that was, was kind of expected. And I don't think more or less than I thought. I knew that was going to be the case, that we would have some things that wouldn't work. There was days and days where the app wouldn't even work for people. But they knew what they were getting into. It hadn't been released yet, so we, we knew where we were. And it made sense. The most important thing was the feedback. Travelers were seeing that we were paying more, and the app was was giving them information quickly. The other thing I said that, that was had to be immediate once we had the, the beta test out was the app had to notify you. I said, I don't want people to have to open the app. I don't want them to have to feel like they have to go into the app. One of the things I noticed from some of the people that had done some website stuff is you actually it means you had to go in there and actively search and do see what was there and i said i don't want that i want where they're you know having fun with their with their their friends or they get off a shift and they check their phone and at the top where they're using an, an android or an iphone it, it says you've got a message from next gen med staff and they can swipe down and see that the position the location and the specialty had matched up that they said they wanted to be you know they wanted to be notified on and i haven't mentioned that but that was the important thing this app had to say You've told us what you want to be notified on, and more importantly, it's not going to tell you stuff that you don't want to be notified on, which I felt was the biggest negative that people said about recruiting is that they're always constantly trying to sell you and stuff that they have and not what you want because they make assumptions that you want this because of money or location, and I want to decide. And we'll talk about that a little bit more because I think there's some things that we learned over the last three years. But that was the whole concept is that you got to choose, here's the specialties, and you know, let's just say we'll take nursing, but I, I float in these three or four areas. I only want to do this one. I don't want to be notified of you know, of of anything but, but just straight step down. I don't want telemetry. I don't want CCU. I want just tele positions, which is usually never the case. But let's just say that was the case. And I only want to be notified in these two states at this point because we were doing states, and the app would not try to sell you in a state that was just outside of it. And that was the other feedback is that people love. But I said it has to notify you. I don't want people to have to open the app or feel like they're a slave to the app. They could have it closed and, and it just is on them like any other app. But if that match comes in, I want to see it right now. And I want to be able to see it 24 hours a day because that was the other big thing is that this app doesn't go to sleep. So we had to make sure that you know the app, the beta was actually allowed people to get those notifications. There were a lot of issues with that. We had to get a lot of approval from Apple and from you know from Google for the Android users. And that was, you know, fighting. We had to explain what we we're doing. We had to write proposals and get things tested through them. A lot more than I than I knew. Complicated stuff because they 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 said no on some things. They, you know, there's 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 processes and things in place that you have to adhere to when it comes to those things. So we had to deal with a lot of you know social securities, telephone numbers, all that stuff was things that I just said again. I want this to happen. Make it happen. I let them do their job, and then they came to me and said, "What do you think?" I said, "Yes or no," and we kept working on it. The concept, again, just to wrap it up, was I want instant notifications when a job's available 24 hours a day for the specialty that the candidate's chosen, the location that they've chosen. I want notifications to come out. I don't want anything else that has to translate to a complete bill rate broken down for taxable tax-free so I can see everything. It has to show shift. It has to show a gross weekly. All the things I wanted. I wanted to talk about hours 36 to 40 and, and overtime, but we couldn't do it at the beginning. We still are doing it now. So there's a lot of things I want this to happen, and I want it to notify them so that they don't have to feel the app is always open. I don't want them to think that they have to constantly be checking this thing. Let it go to sleep. And the only time they have to open it up is if they've changed their mind or they're not available and they don't want the notification because they just found a position with us or somebody else. And I want this thing to be trusted so that they start to learn and know it. And that's what we developed. I kind of want to pause for a second and, and reiterate at this point why I was so excited. All of this that we just mentioned that I wanted the app to do, all was going to be surrounded by lack of salesmanship, which was the biggest thing I didn't like. I've talked about it for you know 98 episodes. I truly feel, and I felt three years, three plus years ago, that this industry needed to get rid of that aspect. Now, I recently said, and I still think this is true, that if a traveler isn't educated and knowledgeable about the things we try to teach you here, whether it's us or from another traveler, I kind of still feel like 
they almost need to have a recruiter to kind of help them get started in this industry. I have a lot of brand new travelers, by the way, so I'll say that I'll qualify it by saying there's a ton of people, and I, even you know our guests we had a few you know back four episodes ago are some of them that get it right away. So there are more and more new travelers that are learning how things should be done. Here's the other thing I'm going to say. I've heard from many people that work for us that we're not the only company anymore after three years that have started paying properly for hours 36 to 40 and for overtime. I don't know if that's because we were doing it and because of this thing, but that was so entrenched and still kind of is in travel healthcare that I'm that makes me feel good. And even if it's not us, I, I don't know where else it came from, but we were the only ones, and you guys know this, for th three years that talked about how to do that properly, and even the companies beforehand. So hearing that there are a few companies, someone telling me, no, I, I had an assignment where someone else was doing the exact same thing where they were taking your, you know, your, your, I'm sorry, your tax-free dollars and dividing that by the number of hours you work, either 36 or 40, to get to you know make that into an hourly rate for every hour and adding that to your taxable dollars and taxing on all that for 36 to 40, even though it's 10, 11, 12 nowadays, obviously a lot higher during the pandemic. I had companies do that. That makes me smile and I'm, I'm gonna at least pretend that it was what we were doing here because I'd like to think it was, but clearly we were trumpeting this where no one else was even talking about it. And I think those, those companies should be proud of that. They should tell people that they do that because that's important. It's almost as important as the pay rate. Right? You can have a high pay rate, but if you're screwing travel nurses for those hours and for overtime, only basing it on taxable time and a half, it doesn't matter. So getting back to this is that I wanted to get, I wanted to get rid of the salesmanship. So not only could we get rid of recruiters, which was going to be an incredible re relief from the operating expenses, and that's how we decided that we could do it. I, I don't even know if I said that out loud in the last you know 40 minutes, but the concept was without that huge burden, I'm, I guess I'm going to talk about it in a minute, that was how we decided we could do it. We don't have those salaries where you hire a recruiter, give them a salary that's guaranteed, which is an operating expense, and then hoping that whatever your break-even point is between what you're gonna your salary and the commission, and every company's different. Where is it that they have to have enough travelers to justify their seat, and then from there on, you know, they're they're making you money, but there's there's a break-even point for everybody. They may have to do with whether they have benefits or not. That's gone. So that allowed us to be able to start out at 20%. And here's what I'll tell you. We didn't have very many, very a whole lot of operating expenses. But what we did have is we had the app. So we were, we were throwing all of our initial capital toward the app. But the, the concept was, it just started making sense. My dream of being able to also now realize that I could get rid of the what I felt was, again, you guys have heard me say it. I told every beta test person, the job of recruiters to sell you on jobs that we all have, and the job is the idea is, is to have you take it through them. And please don't look anywhere else, regardless of whether whether or not we have a good or bad pay rate compared to their companies. That's really what the job was up until then. And I said that's got to stop, and we've got to take salesmanship out. And for those of you that have worked for me, you guys know we don't. There's nobody at you know on the other end of a text or other out of our. Uh, wow, on the other end of our app that is ever trying to say, you, should, you know, you should take this. They may ask if you're going to because we're being asked from the hospital, but there's never a time where someone says, well, I, I think I might take something else. That anybody says, hey, are you, are you sure? Unless you've asked us to, to do that. Now, I have gotten the phone with a couple people that I know well and, and real specific times where I've said, hey, are you sure? Only because I was, I was concerned about them. And I always look at the fact that I believe, I still do, that at some point they're going to, they're going to, they're going to work with us because we're going to start getting more and more contracts. And if we're beating everybody every contract we have, eventually they're going to try us. And if I don't mention it, our retention rate is awesome. Fantastic. Now, we lost people when the pandemic shut, kind of stopped instantly in the spring of 2022 because a lot of people stopped traveling. There was a lot of people that you know, were getting positions that are too competitive now. I remember people that had just barely dabbled in like telemetry or getting full-on tally positions because they needed everybody. Those people we weren't able to retain frequently, but the people that once they come to work for us, I mean, you guys have seen it and things we've put out there. It, it's, it's, it does work. So our challenge at this point was to get the word out where we are in our story. We had to get the word out and that I didn't want to, I didn't want to raise a whole lot of capital for mark and, and then throw it into marketing. I felt that we had a pretty niche market, traveling healthcare professionals, 
and that it would be better for us to go slowly because remember, I wasn't going after every contract on the planet because I didn't want to have everybody and then fail for most of them. We didn't want to look like we were barely delivering because we barely had an app out. And then to my story, we still hadn't. So it was a fine line I was walking. We were getting people booked, which was surprising to me, on just the couple of things we had. Now, there was one big one and a couple small things. So what was obvious is that we were killing the rates for the contracts we have, and we still are to this day. But we also didn't have that much. So we lost a lot of people, and, and I think it was good that for contracts that we just didn't have because there was more options. And I always said, and I still say this, if there's a contract where you want, if we have it, I'd like you to look at what we have it through the app, great. If it makes sense, perfect. But if we don't have the contract, we can't be competitive. So take the contract, make as much money as you can. And I still say it to this day. There's no salesmanship, which was so much incorporated into this whole idea that this is what made me even smile bigger. I mean, if you guys can't tell, I thought I'd be able to do this in an hour. I don't think I'm going to be able to. I'll go as long as I can. This will probably be the longest episode because I'm just fired up about this. Three years later, here I am talking to, to you know nobody, and I'm excited because I hope that's coming through because I, I just am. This is exactly what's going to happen, and you guys know it is. You're already seeing it out there. And it, was, it just makes so much sense that you can't help but get excited for you guys. So you can have a company. Let's, let's think about this. We can develop, develop a company that can run off of a, a significantly lower margin, which absolutely should mean, and it better darn well mean, that our slice of pie is smaller. And for those of you guys that know, the second year we dropped down by one full percent to 19. And currently in our third year, we are at 18%. And I'm hoping in July, July 4th is our kind of our... Sort of, sort of anniversary, even though we opened in the you know, first of the year, that I'm hoping to draft on a 17, which is a real 17, which is unheard of in this industry because of what I just described. We're not hiring more and more recruiters, increasing our overhead as we grow. And I've told you guys many times, that's what happens to companies. As they get bigger, it costs more to run them. They've got to do more advertising. They've got to have more payroll, more credentialing. They're adding more pieces of, the, of their operating expenses, getting bigger buildings. Have you ever, ever seen any kind of advertising, whether it's on TikTok or wherever, where the, you know, someone holds a camera up and they show this huge bullpen of just cubicle after cubicle after cubicle? Every one of those cubicles has a salary. It has commission. It has potential health care. It's got a, a license for their software. It's got cell phone or, or telephone system and everything. It's, it is a huge little square of money that is guaranteed whether they have a deal or not. So that money has to be re recuperated. And guess where it comes from? And, and understand, it's, it comes from their slice of the pie. So when I tell people that it costs you to have a recruiter, it's not because you have one. I'm saying if you didn't have one, you should make more, if that makes sense, which means it does cost you to have a recruiter. But the concept has always been there. It's the way it always had ran. So it was so exciting, and it still is to this day, because we could take salesmanship out. And again, prove me wrong. And those of you guys that have worked for us, have, I, have we ever, has anybody ever said, are you sure? Or threw out an assignment that was somehow got the app or went in the back end and threw something in there that was something you didn't want? Absolutely not, because I think that has to go away. So we have everything we're looking for. It just started making a lot of sense. This series, Travel Evolved, transparently was specifically designed because I said, we can talk about anything, anything, because if the app is going to be transparent, if our company can be transparent, then why shouldn't we educate travelers? And this is where it grows and we make more and more sense. And that's the idea. And again, I'm just I'm telling you guys, Travel Evolved was designed to help Next Gen MedStep, but it was also designed to help you guys. I've said repeatedly we were doing it on the side because we were. I never really was sure if I was ever going to put the two together. But to be honest, after two, two years of this, it doesn't make sense not to. I'm not that dumb where I'm just going to do this the whole time. Eventually, I'm going to say, and we did, and I changed my mind. And I said, all right, it's silly not to at least talk about what we're doing because I want you guys to try us, of course. But I also want you to try other things like us and just be a little bit more open that you don't have to stick with the same model. There's going to be more and more ways that I haven't thought of and no one else has yet of you guys being able to bring home more of that bill rate that hospitals are being charged. And I believe that. So everything was coming into play. Travel Evolve was designed, I said, let's get them to be more educated because it does make for a, a more educated traveler, which means 
the better the company, the more people that are educated, the better our company would be. But I said we've got to stay ahead of the curve on pay, and you know, we've got to stay ahead of the curve. We can never stop developing the app. We can never stop creating bells and whistles and filters and customizations that people can do so that the app gets stronger and stronger and more specific and more personal. And that's still true today. And I said we'll keep continuing to drop our margin. And we'll let technology take over because if we can replace having to, and I, I'm not going to give out a lot of stuff, but trust me, there's a lot more things that we think the app can do than just show you positions. We think once you go to work for us, the app has a lot of power to help you be better informed, to make decisions, to look at things, to, you know, and everything else that's incorporated that, that you kind of have to go to your recruiter to. If an app can do it and we can save money and it does it well, only if it does it well, wouldn't we still be able to drop our margins even more because our company's still growing and we're looking at that and it's it's post facto. We're not hiring recruiters to teach you to go on board. We're not spending, you know, we're not taking bigger pieces of the pie to make the app develop more. We're keeping everything the same, actually lowering our margin, increasing the traveler's margin, and developing the app as time goes by because of our growth. It made a whole lot of sense. But this series was specifically meant to make travelers more informed so that they would make better decisions and stop being so blindly gullible to what we felt was a dated model. Here's what I'll tell you. Again, I have, there are, listen, I feel bad for recruiters. I really do because I, I think you can tell that, and, and I hope they can too. There are some, ama listen, nothing against them. There are am amazing recruiters. I've trained amazing recruiters that are still in this industry working for other companies. I feel bad because I hope they understand that their job is is going to probably go away because it's going to be less and less necessary. Now, I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know how long it's going to take for the majority of healthcare travelers to move to something like this, but I can see it already. I think the pandemic increased that rapidly because travelers were looking for jobs themselves. They were telling people about them. They were trying new companies. They were trying new things. There was a couple of those web-driven agencies that really went crazy and I heard they did great and now I've heard they're, they're, they're struggling with a little bit of that customer service which we've addressed already and we already have a plan for that as our growth continues. So it already kind of happened. I think the new traveler is changing it. So I will tell you guys that if you are, again, if you're a recruiter, I, I feel terrible for you. It's not me. We're not pushing the recruiters out. It's going to happen. So we're going to be part of it because I don't want to be left behind. And we are and we may be, you know, on the catalyst of it. I understand that, but it's not meant to, to hurt anybody. We're not trying to. I just, matter of fact, I'm telling people right now, and I have repeatedly, look for something else to do in this industry because if you like it, try something on your own. Go start something yourself. Try to figure out how you can, you know, make travelers make more money. It's just hard, but that's the concept of why we did Travel Evolved. It was, it wasn't. I shouldn't say it's why we did it. It worked really well together. I guess that's the best concept. We could be completely open, completely transparent. And again, those of you that work for me know that there's nothing that I say agencies shouldn't do here that we don't do. Every one of my travelers should know, if they don't, they don't ask, what the bill rate is. And I will walk them through it, provided they understand the numbers, because that should be important. They should be able to validate, am I really at an 18% margin? Absolutely, they should know that. And when July 4th comes, the next assignment, they'll see that the calculator that's happening in our app automatically has moved by 1%, it's a, it's a change of a digit on the back end for my developer to make that change. So that will happen. We think that's important. And that was the concept. And that's why we spend this kind of time because it made sense. They started working hand in hand. And I felt that was important. And that's kind of why I felt that I should keep them separate because I didn't want to lose the integrity of Travel Evolved and turn it into a next gen. This episode, absolutely not the case. And that's why I hope to get this out so we can move on. So the other thing that was great during the time that the, the pandemic was there is that because we were able to get a lot of people working more than we thought, and as we moved into 2022, we were getting more and more people. We had the, the you know, the beta was getting bigger. Matter of fact, we ended up having close to a thousand people on the beta test. And then some left and some weren't, you know, weren't using it. We could tell what they were doing, but more and more people were using it. We were able to create some revenue and we actually were able to go out and get some pretty significant capital at that point that we felt was important because we wanted to make sure that we what was happening, and I've shared this with you guys a little bit, we were growing really quickly, faster than I thought. And the money was a lot because we were paying people so much, of course, and we were getting paid a lot. I've been very open about that. We did well here too, but we did less well percentage-wise than any other company we knew. 
but it was important that we did exactly what we said. If I showed you, if the app said this, then to the penny we did it. If we were, you know, there couldn't be anything that was wrong in that. And again, those of you that work for us know we were exactly right, to the penny. So we had a little bit of an opportunity to continue to develop the app. We actually released it in, I, I want to say March. I can't remember which was first. I think, I think the Android was first on Google Play, and I think iTunes and iPhone came out about 45 days later. So barely a year ago, well, I'm recording this in May. I think it's not going to be released until mid to late June because of where we are, but we'll already be out in California by then. But we did this because I wanted to get it done before we, you know, we got out of here. So uh, you know, a, little, a little over a year ago when this was being aired, we actually finally came out with the actual real versions on Android and on Google Play, and we were a success right away, and it was, it was awesome, and we loved it. So it bought that time, and we got a little bit more, quite a bit more capital behind our company to make sure that we had lots and lots of money so that we could handle you know, our growth, and we continued our process. We didn't throw it at marketing. We didn't throw it at development. We developed exactly the way we wanted to, and we started to hit, hit our stride. That was important, and we never sold people on whether or not the job made sense. It was, here it is, and what do you think? This is what the concept was, again. It was, there wasn't, well, first of all, first and foremost, it was across the board. When we were at 20%, every job was at 20%. The app did that with one calculation. So when we moved at 19, every job was at 19, and now that we're at 18%, every job's at 18%. By the way, most companies are almost twice that, 36%. You know, and higher. So when I tell you, it's weird. We are literally making half the money that a lot of other companies are. The, the difference is, now that the rates have become a little bit more normalized, the disparagement is showing up a little bit less. That's why I get a little bit frustrated sometimes when, when a traveler goes, well, it's only $150 less. Well, the bill rate might only be, I don't know, 70 bucks because we see certain specialties, you know, not a lot, but let's say it's, that's a rate for, I don't even want to throw out there, Somebody's got a rate at 70 bucks an hour. We have seen those, and not, not necessarily nursing or, or some alley, but they're there. If it's a $70 bill rate, the difference is going to be less of that additional 18% than if it's a $150 bill rate. But the idea is that we still should be the top paying company for any given assignment. Someone's going to come along and offer less, I'm sure, here and there, but not consistently and not across the board. So that was super important. So the idea was that it wasn't us. There's no negotiation with next gen med staff. We don't offer anything better if you're a good negotiator. I want to get that out of the, out of the way and out of the equation too. I hate that about traveling healthcare. That you guys have to fight tooth and nail for every penny, and you have to offer this and offer that. And like I've always said, if you get a better deal than you initially got, I would be angry. Why didn't I? Why did I have to be good at this and convince you I was going to leave in order for you to to finally go? Here's the best we can do. Couldn't they just give you that from the get go? It's, 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 I don't like it, it's difficult. And I said, here's what it is. There's, not, there's nobody to negotiate with. If you like this rate, hit the apply button. If you don't, pass. And there's a ton of times when the rate makes no sense. All that means is that facility has a anticipated bill rate that they seem to feel is what they need to offer and they either historically or at this current time they think they can get fulfillment for that. And it just means if it's less than what you want to gross weekly, it's not the right job for you right now. That's all it means. There's nobody to be offended, and there's no reason to get upset. It just means that's the rate right now for that market, and it should be higher than anybody else is offering for that given hospital and that given time. Now, there could be a hospital across town that has a different rate that we don't have that might be higher. Jump on that one. Again, the app's always going to be there. So if you keep the app and you keep it running, we'll talk about what that's going to do for you. But here's, like I said, the great thing about it is that we don't have upfront operating expenses. So that was a big part of it. We could grow the company without having to add recruiters. Now we have to add customer service, we have to add credentialing, we have to add payroll, HR, those sorts of things. We're gonna be higher and higher on a lot of our, our you know, insurance and all that stuff. But that's, again, happens as we grow and it doesn't come out of the traveler's pocket. So no one's making commission. That was super important to me if you work through us. There was no, there's no pressure. There's nobody to call you and make you feel disappointed. We're not, you know, there's nobody to upsell or try to convince you to take something different. It, it just didn't make sense. Um, and we, I said, the other thing, and people that were working with me know, I said, never, ever let me even consider increasing a margin because of whatever we're dealing with. I don't care what it is. I don't care if, if interest rates go up and who knows what. And we have to, we're going so crazy that we, we start going back to a line of credit that's high. I don't care if I say I want to get an office for the development team. Never let me ever say we're going to increase the margin. And 
Trust me, my team is, won't let me, and we're not going to anyway. I wouldn't even suggest that. It's not even important. So here's what's what I like. What's changed over the last years, and I hope I have time to, to kind of do this, is my my the benefit has actually, a new benefit has actually increased for me that the app does, and I didn't think about it at the very beginning. Here was the unknown. And there always is, and that's what I think makes it so fun. We were so hyper-focused on the money, 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 which has never changed. A couple things happen. The first thing was, and this is kind of a little bit of a backtrack, our challenge at this point was that we didn't have every job. And again, I told you that's by design. We didn't want to go out and get, you know, jump into bed with every vendor and then not be able to produce for them. That made no sense at all. What happened during the pandemic is that a whole bunch of companies burned them. A bunch of companies came out of it from nowhere that had no experience or maybe a little bit of experience or came from a different field that had done staffing for accounting or for legal temps or something along that line. And they got in there and they all said, yeah, 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 because we need the help. And they wanted to take, the vendors wanted to take advantage of the pandemic as well. So what happened was a lot of companies came in and made it even more difficult, if you will, for them to be able to, um, you know, to, to open their doors up to new vendors. So we didn't want to be one of those. So our biggest challenge was there was a lot of positions that we didn't have, and we were okay with that. When the app came out, we said, let's start to go for it. And that's where we found it a little bit more difficult. And I'll explain that a little bit later on the road, and I think I already had before. There are, there are people that we've started off with, but they want to kind of see what we can do, and I'm fine with that because it changed. The rules kind of changed because they now wanted people that could prove themselves. And so as time goes by, what we're excited about is that more and more jobs are going to be available. So that's what's great about this thing is that we didn't have to have every job out there as long as people knew that we weren't, you weren't going to see everything. And our concept still to this day is you take whatever you can get and take the highest you can get. It just so happens that we feel that if we have a job and we're pretty transparent about the jobs we have, that it should be and always is the highest paid, highest offered. And that should be straight across the board. So that was the challenge. We had to kind of explain to folks that there are times that you know we're not going to see as much as a lot of other people can. So you take what you can get. And we've explained that recently with you know, what the hell is going on, those episodes that we talked about. There's a lot of things like that. And so that was challenging, and the rules did change. But the great thing that we did not expect, and I think this was such a cool little wrinkle and surprise was the efficiency of the app started to become more and more of a benefit. Sometimes almost so much so that it even trumped the pay that we were offering. And here's what I mean. The fact that the app literally updates every five minutes, and it will probably update instantly as we get bigger and bigger home servers, and we've got four or five now, that are you know in a different location <clears throat> as the app becomes more sophisticated and we make sure that we get a full run of the jobs we're doing it every five minutes because it takes about five minutes for it to run <clears throat> if that makes sense so it's basically instantly updating we knew two things we knew that people had to be notified 24 hours a day we knew it couldn't discriminate the notification it didn't matter which is the benefit i'm going to get to we also knew it needed to close jobs which is a weird thing because Recruiters are always hesitant to tell you that you didn't get the job or that it's not there anymore because they want to keep you engaged. If they call and tell you that it's not, what's the next thing that they say? However, I've got this, this, and this. And again, you already kind of feel responsible. You fill out their paperwork. And you guys have told us, and this is how we know this, that it's you kind of don't want to work with a whole bunch of people. So you stick with the two or three companies you've got. And you're all right, what else do you have? And you kind of want to do that because you don't want to fill out more paperwork. We understand that. So... A recruiter is hesitant, but they'll tell you they don't have the job, but then they'll try to steer you into another place again, getting rid of that salesmanship, or they'll add the salesmanship. The app needed to tell you when a job is closed so that you knew if it was your top priority that you needed to go out either through the app or with another company and look for something else. That had to be instant as well. It didn't have to take a day or when a recruiter finally got around to telling you. That was an important aspect of it because I think that communication is every bit as important as communicating when a job opens up. So that was a big deal for us. So what happened was we realized in this concept that I've been talking about really only in season two is that the, the recruiter's day, is a there is prioritization with every recruiter for every traveler. I'll talk about it a little bit more, but for me, it was everything was prioritized. In other words, 
Every specialty was notified every five minutes. Every traveler, regardless of his or her marketability, it didn't matter you know, what the commission you know, base was that was gonna make a recruiter more or less money. It wasn't the fastest deal a recruiter had that only those people got notified. All those things, the margin that the recruiter was able to negotiate, in other words, if you were a, a, a less savvy number-wise traveler and a recruiter could pad their margin and make more commission, I've explained that to you guys before, how that is really real in a lot of commission plans. That didn't come into play. So literally, no matter what level you were of a traveler or what your specialty was, everybody got notified, which is really important for folks that are less marketable, have less experience, have a less higher, the, the, the bill rate was all based upon that bill rate. All those things were instantly notified across the board without discrimination. And what was happening was everyone was realizing that they were seeing things from us a lot faster, sometimes days faster than they were being notified from their recruiter because they now started to realize what their priority was. And again, no one was, I don't, no one ever said that they were mad at their recruiter. They just realized that what we've been saying was right, that they would see a job instantly with us. They would actually be submitted if they fill out their paperwork and be in front of that manager. And a day or two later, a recruiter might call and say, hey, I've got this job at a course at a lower rate. So that was something I didn't, I didn't put as much emphasis on the efficiency and the speed in which notifications would come out. And I didn't actually think a lot about how recruiters really handle their day. I knew it happened, but it became such an important aspect of this app that it really was what told me the current model, the recruiter model is in trouble because they're only human. Oops, sorry. They're only human. They can't do things as, as fast and efficient as an app can. It's just impossible. So there's no way that they can do that. It's, it's literally impossible. So that became a bigger and bigger part of the benefit of using a recruiter's app. Much like it's the same thing when you're going and searching a, a website, for example, that has other jobs with transparency on there, there's no discrimination there either. When you're relying upon a couple, two, three, or a handful of recruiters to communicate with you the jobs you want, that takes some level of time, unless you're the very first person they talked to. And that was so interesting because it was a benefit we knew was there, but the, the, the opportunity cost that people had been missing by not being the first person in front or one of the first people in front of that job became a bigger deal. So what was happening is that on weekends, on holidays, at 10 o'clock at night, people were being submitted to jobs, waiting for the office where the recruiter was if they were, you know, some, listen, some recruiters do work late hours and work, you know, crazy hours, but predominantly it would at least be waiting until the next business day and it would also be waiting until people got to them, if that makes sense. I, I, again, I'm, I'm, this has been a long episode, but that was so cool and so interesting that I didn't expect that part of the app to almost come up close to the pay. The pay was super important, still is, we have to maintain that. But just the speed and the efficiency was what was so obviously updated by using the app, and it became obvious. So again, with our app, and this is a commercial, I'm just telling you, I want to get this out of the way so we can move on, we can talk and do the next three seasons of Travel Evolve and reference what we're doing, and you'll get it more and hopefully fill in the blanks. But the, you know, the concept really was that you didn't have to send any paperwork in. If you liked a job, you hit the apply button, and then the team would go to work for you. We could see it on the back end, we'd get notified, we'd say, hey, great, we'd look and see what you had. If you had a resume, great, we'd ask for the rest of the stuff. We wanted to make it super easy, simple, and we'd, we had quick things that would automatically send to you. It would check it. We've got some more development to do on that, but if we had everything, we could instantly be submitting you literally about 20 hours a day out of 24, and even on holidays on weekends. And that's what was so interesting is that we, we were more efficient and incredibly high, highly more effective with the app. And I underestimated that huge benefit. And it was a big one. And it was just one of those fun surprises that we didn't really thought, think about. And it wasn't until travelers started telling us that, you know, it was working and they were excited about it that made so much sense to us. And that's what's great about it. You know, people can get their paperwork to us. And the only thing we kind of ask them to update is if we look and see that it's been even three months, we do oftentimes ask you for another resume because nowadays people are looking and they don't want any gaps. They mean good travelers, 
they get it. But if it doesn't look like you've worked for three months, they, these hospitals do want to know what you're doing. And sometimes you got a vendor in the middle who's previewing these resumes and they want to know. So that's about it. If we haven't seen a resume from you, then we'll ask you for that. And if it's been a long time for a skills check, we'll ask you for that too. But you're the one telling us, apply. It means you want to go in front of the job and you can see that you've been submitted. And then you also see when the job opens and, or I should say closes. And if it reopens, you're going in front of it again. That was the surprise that was it became a bigger benefit and a big competitive edge because it made more sense uh, to us than it had in the past. I know this episode's taking a while, but we're gonna keep going at it, obviously. I'm not gonna do this in two parts, we'll do it in one. Maybe it's an episode you guys will watch or listen to in parts because I just wanna get this out of the way so we can move on. All right, so when I talk about things like Facebook groups, those are the same kind of thing, I mean, I understand that it was great a few years ago when they were kind of new. It was a wonderful way for travelers to kind of see what was out there to compare agencies, which you know an app does. It allowed them to kind of you know decide who they wanted to work for. And I think what happened is a lot of people, and you guys have told me this, and a lot of you have told me this, that you take a meme or a, an advertisement on a Facebook group, and I'll just say, let's say it's a respiratory therapy group, a therapy group, and let's say it's so specific, it's a Missouri respiratory therapy group. So if someone posted a job in, you know, Branson, Missouri, for this position, you you knew it was that hospital, you could compare with other agencies, and sometimes you would call your recruiter that you really liked and say, do you guys have this? And they said yes. You were pushing yourself up on the on the priority list because you were basically saying, well, get me in front of it. So you were recruiting yourself. And that was kind of, we started seeing this sort of thing. So I get frustrated sometimes when, well, I'll put it this way. When there's a next gen med staff, we've got a marketing team that, that, that again, part of our operating expense, that throws things out there. They've got some, you know, same kind of thing. We're not showing specific jobs. Like we think that's crazy. Why would we show a job? And this is what drives me nuts. Those posts could literally be obsolete the second after they're posted because unlike an app, a recruiter's not always looking. How long is that job there? Now, usually it's a new job, but recruiters are also kind of deciding what they're going to post and where. They're looking for the best catch. How many people can I snare around my net? So what's the highest ping? What's the best location? Because they don't want to post an itty-bitty hospital in some, you know, kind of, a, I'll just say, a podunk town that they don't think is going to have a lot of interest. That's a waste of their time. So they don't usually do that. They're trying to use their time as wisely as, as they can. So typically they do a first brand new position but sometimes they're looking and they'll post it again or something else like that by the time that gets an hour or two later that job could be gone this is why we talk about the bait and switch so a lot of you guys will call on that job or you're asked your recruiter oh that job's gone but you know i've got this one this one this one or they'll get your paperwork and then they'll tell you oh by the time you get your paperwork in the job's gone i used to train people to do that i mean it, it's as shady as it is it works and i'm sorry but it does when you're training recruiters and when you're trying to get people to do stuff that was part of what I loved not being a part of anymore. That's the part that didn't make me feel good. You were doing it because you kind of justify it by saying, well, I'm, I I'm have the traveler's best interest in mind. The fact is you're just trying to, you're trying to gain more of a market share. You're trying to make commission. You're trying to get people to work for your company. And it works, unfortunately. Those Facebook groups are tough because to this day, many of them want just that. I want a Branson, Missouri respiratory therapist job with all the details. And what you want to tell them is that, hey, I've got an app that you can pick Branson, Missouri, and you can pick respiratory therapy, and it's going to give you the details every time. And by the way, it's going to be a lot more accurate than what you're allowing in your Facebook group. And it's going to be up to date. And if it's not there, it's not going to be on your Facebook group. But there's still people that run those pages, oftentimes they're travelers themselves, and they just don't get it. And they consider it spam or something like that. So it drives me a little crazy because Lots of times we get, you know, they'll hold our ads and something like that. I don't, it doesn't matter. Inevitably, it's going to be the way it is. And you guys are already shifting away from those groups. They're stagnant. They're not growing. They're actually shrinking. A lot of people are shutting them down because they were like a 5,000 plus, you know, kind of a name of a group. And, you know, as, as the rates continue to lower, there's less and less of that. So they're kind of going by the wayside. But it's, it, it again, shows the inefficiency of the, of the industry. It's incredibly inefficient, guys and gals. I keep saying that. It just is. And this is why when people in the last three years have said things like, oh, I, you know, I, I'm not interested in that. I, I like the way it is. I kind of go, great, because you're, you're not the right fit because you just don't get it and you're not willing to look at anything. And I knew that not, that not everybody would be interested in this. We wouldn't be right for everybody. I eventually think 
companies like ours and this concept is going to be the way it's going to be and everybody will realize that it is the right way but you know we're still not there yet and i'm okay with that it's it's we want to keep getting better we want to keep grabbing some more and more positions and we want that to kind of work in cohesion with as people you know continue to download and keep our app we're not asking us to go to work for us or try it just just have it there and i'll explain why that's kind of important but it was kind of interesting because i just said that that was another kind of thing that was interesting besides the discrimination it became more and more obvious that with those facebook groups and things like that how just archaic the process was and when i talk to people and i talk to a lot of people that use our app and especially you know i get involved as often as i can because this is what i do now um, because things are kind of on a little bit on autopilot so my job is to is to help and to make sure that we're there and to make sure that the customer service aspect doesn't change so when i talk to people that get it, I can tell they get it right away. And that's the ones that we're looking for that say, wow, this makes sense because I, I, I already know this, this, and this. I don't need this and this. And that's exactly what, what I saw when it, when it all came to me. It made perfect sense. So um, what I guess the thing that kind of goes along with that is that the other kind of concept that became more inefficient, you know, obvious inefficiency in the industry was more and more people were telling us and still are to this day that they change their mind on pay rates, locations all the time. You know, all of a sudden the, the, the supply and demand is, is shifting and now there's, you know, more supply, less demand. All of a sudden you're willing to take something less in a location that previously you, you said you wouldn't be because you're not getting a job. That's fair. That's real. Or the opposite. Also, you know, it's, it's becoming winter and there's cold weather locations that you no longer are willing to take at this rate. Now for me to go up there, it's this. With something like this, that's perfectly okay. Or let's say all of a sudden you decide, I want to go to the coast of Maine this summer. I want to go down to you know, Southern California. With the old model, you have to wait to communicate that with that, you know, with your recruiter and say, either I want to add this or I want to cancel what I was telling you I wanted before and now change it to this, which means you got to hope that you got to wait till the recruiter's there. You got to hope to get a hold of them. You leave a message, you have to hope they get it. They have to put the things in place and then now you've got a different priority. And how long does that take? How many days? How many hours? If they're not open, it, that became apparent too. People said they love the fact that they can say, you know what, I've got a compact state license or I'm, I'm willing to go here and you can change your mind in an instant and you can add, take away, and you instantly can see what's available and now the notifications are for that area because you change your mind. That flexibility was another thing, admittedly, that we never really thought about the benefit. We knew it would be there because we want it to be customizable for you guys, but we would never really considered how much of an important aspect that was because especially during the pandemic and as things opened and, and things shifted and changed and they did and they have still, something like an app was able to shift with you guys whereas a recruiter was just you know trying to keep their head afloat with all the different people they had and all the nuances of what they wanted and as that changed, a lot of them had trouble, admittedly because we're human, so it's, it's hard. That was a concept we didn't really fully appreciate, and it was just one of those things that were like, oh, that's, that's cool too. And, and it was not designed for the shift. It was designed so that you guys would be in charge, but it became apparent through a lot of travelers and the feedback that this is one of the things that they absolutely loved about. It. So again, just some cool, cool stuff. Like I said, the design, and still to this day right now, you can download the app and you can, all you have to do is register with an email. You have to validate your phone number so we can communicate with you. Um, because we had a lot of people at our beta test that were, you know, missing a digit or they purposely didn't want us to communicate, which we were fine with. But when it came time to need their paperwork or to let them know that we were being submitted or they got a position, we couldn't get a hold of them because the number was either incorrect accidentally or purposefully. So we've changed that. That's all you have to do is just register with an email and, you know, validate your phone number so you get the messages that, you know, from the app and you can see everything. And that, remains consistent to the day. That was an important aspect that we don't want to change. We wanted to keep the margins dropping. We're going to continue to do that. It's, I, I said a lot of stuff I'm looking at, but the, the idea, and here's what you guys want, what I want you to understand. I had companies that struggled trying to maintain and really struggled to the point where they weren't there anymore because we tried to maintain the lowest margin in the industry and it became difficult as we grew. More money was needed, more operating expenses were there, and you needed to increase the number of people to make up for that. And if it didn't happen, things got tricky. And that's why I've learned, I've told you guys that as companies grow, 
it's not really their fault. I've defended these companies that as they grow, their margins kind of have to increase. So it's a general rule of thumb that typically the, the more travelers a company is working for them, the bigger their margin is going to have to be to support that staff and that advertising, that marketing, that concept. And there's some other things that kind of accidentally happen, like more people you know, get promoted to you know, a higher level and a little bit of salaries get inflated. And that's just kind of natural. But there's reasons why companies have trouble maintaining a thin margin. And, I, and it just is what it is. The benefit is that typically they're better, they have more positions, there's more opportunities, and, and it, it should kind of balance. But I felt like it hasn't been. What was crazy is that it's so easy to maintain a low margin. And what's wild is that it's easy to drop it as we get busier and we actually are more you know, successful. And that's what we also, we kind of knew, but seeing that happen has been wonderful because we're getting more and more efficient. We have more and more positions. So we've got more dollars to play with, which means we can focus more on the app. We can get it development and add bells and whistles and things faster. We can bring on the support that the travelers need because they're already on the road as opposed to hopefully bringing on support so that we don't get caught with our pants down, which is a, a risk. We have to do that first. Those companies have to do all that first, whether it's recruiting, credentialing, payroll. They have to do that so they don't get caught behind because they can't get caught behind. So there's always that risk, and that's why it's difficult. We don't have that, so it's actually incredibly easy for us to maintain that. So um, it, it just kind of makes sense to us. I'm just going through some notes I have because um, – I just want to make sure I've, I've covered a lot of this stuff, but I'm, I'm going to finish up here sh soon for sure. Um, did that. We talked about the yeah, negotiations, all the things I wrote down. It's just some bullet points, and I knew my brain would go all over the place, and it always does. Um, a couple things that, that, I, that I haven't talked about yet. Right now, we are in client acquisition mode because the app is is moving along well. We, we're doing a lot of stuff that we update all the time, and what's crazy is that most of the time the updates we do are for efficiency, for speed, for bug fixes. So a lot of times we're updating and you guys can't tell because you don't see anything physically that, that changes. There's a lot of things that are coming. I don't want to go into a lot of detail because, I, again, I, I got to keep some things close to the vest. I don't want to give too many competitors ideas. But just understand that we're going to have a lot of features that are there without gobbledygooking up the app. We want to keep it clean. But you guys have asked us for more filters, more options, uh, a little bit more communication through the app on statuses the the thing that that i have found interesting and i want to bring this up because it is kind of wild when you're dealing with a recruiterless app first of all you're not dealing with a, a a humanless company we saw that mistake with other people and we said we can't make that mistake and i think you've heard travelers that have worked for us i finally brought them on because i wanted you guys to know that what i say is real that's important and we never want to get caught behind the reason i'm going to california everybody is because I think it's time for us to increase our operations out there and have more people so that things are done quicker. We gotta, we're got we probably going to regionalize payroll so we're not waiting for everybody. We're at that point now where we got to kind of break it up so that we have less people and we're running individual payrolls because of time zones and we have more time to get the you know, Kronos reports in. And it just it means a speed issue. It, we can do, I can hire people now that we have the, the success as opposed to the other way around, which means the profit and our margins are what's paying for that because we want to continue to grow. So we're choosing to take profit and invest it in our company so that your customer experience is better. That's kind of the biggest difference. So that's the real reason we're going out there is we feel apps here, it's time to start focusing on some things that we are anticipating that are going to be important and we're already seeing a little bit of some lag on some things. So that's the real reason we think now it's time to make sure that the human element is, is not missing. So along with that, it's time for us to go after some more clients now. So we're openly doing that. We gained a lot this past six months. But again, and this is, I'll tell you, again, transparently, we got a lot of new vendors involved, but they gave us like this. The problem with that for us is that we are not going to go out and sell this. Remember this concept. They give you the hard to find things so that you go out and push them. Well, we don't sell. So we let the app take care of itself and we let you know the powers that be and, and luck decide. So if they only give us a CVOR position or a first assist or something really crazy, then eventually there's gonna be a CVOR person that finds our app, that looks at it and it, and it matches up. The, the difficulty is a CVOR position is probably one of our least popular, and you know, we have less of those than probably a lot of other things. So I worry that a CVOR you know, nurse would look at that and go, oh, this app is, is useless. So here's what I'll tell you guys. If you download the app, 
What's wonderful about it is that you can keep the app. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't take up a lot of memory. You don't have to open it up. What I'm hoping is that people will now start to say, I want to kind of see the shifts in market trends. And that's a great benefit, again, that we, we kind of thought, and we pushed that a little bit, that at least with us, you can see what we have. So in other words, our price is going up or down in the positions in the states that you're located and you, or you're, say you're interested in. What's the pay rate? What's the volume? Are you seeing less like we are potentially you know, a few weeks ago? Is it growing? These are things that are important, whether you're using our company and you're actually going to work for us or just using the app as a barometer to kind of judge what's going on. Eventually, as those positions grow, we feel that Again, it, there should be a compelling reason. Maybe you're just not comfortable using an app, and I get that. You want to talk to a recruiter. But the pay rate, you'll start seeing overlap of more and more positions because we'll have more, and you should see a higher rate of pay. So it's kind of cool because a lot of people have – we've had people that were on a beta test that never even applied to a position and have been applying you know, maybe a couple of weeks ago. And that's I think that's awesome. That means they've had it, they've used it, they've updated it. And Finally, something made sense. I mean, who knows? Maybe they, they had a place they wanted to go to. Or maybe they stopped traveling. I don't, I don't know. We don't ask because it's not, it's not our business. But if somebody is there, we can see. We know that when they you know, joined it, we're like, wow, that person joined in 2020, and they just now applied for the first time. So we sent them out the, the information on how to get our paperwork, which is just on our website. And you know, they fill out their skills checklist. They send it in, and, and they're done. They're ready to go. And we, we now tell them their profile is complete and you know, keep, keep looking for positions. The interesting thing that, that has been another challenge for us, and I'll, just, I'll share this with you, I think this is just part of the education and the involvement of the industry is that a lot of travelers are asking us, well, where do I stand? And I realized, but my first reaction was, well, no one tells you that. I, I would never, I, you know, recruiters don't know. Most hospitals don't say, oh, I'm really happy with John. He looks really good, so we probably are going to interview him. No, they don't give you that feedback. It's really rare. No one does that. It's either you're in front of the job, the job is either filled by somebody else, which they never want to tell you, a recruiter doesn't, or it's been canceled, or it's on hold and we can't submit you, or it's gone. And you rarely know why. You know, over time, and I've done this before, you kind of start to figure out maybe what's wrong with your profile and maybe things you need to work on. But there really isn't any communication from a recruiter except to tell you it's gone and then try to convince you and once again sell you on something else. So it's interesting that we, I will tell you, we do have more, I think we have more people looking for feedback that they've never gotten from anybody because they're, they're getting calls, but it's more like maintenance calls and temperature reading. How, how's this person doing? Are they still interested? Should I still sell them? Do I need to push them for more? Do they get a call? It's, there's no difference in communication between what you get from an app and what you get from a recruiter except for you take out the salesmanship if you really think about it. The app does tell you if the job's still there. It tells you you've been submitted, so that's great. So I found that interesting and still do. we got to figure out how to do that because I actually think this app should communicate better than a recruiter because it should be more communicative on exactly what's happening at that facility so you know really what's going on. And again, it eliminates the salesmanship of trying to convince you to take something lower or someplace you really don't want to go. You should still be in charge. You decide, hey, I'm not getting any phone calls from anything, whether it's this or anything else. I need to kind of recruit myself and push myself and maybe expand my horizons. That's what it should do along with what else you're doing. So that that's the only, again, I, just things we're kind of working on. Um, it's, it's just kind of the whole thing is... The uninstalling of the app is great. We can see how many people uninstall it, and barely anybody does. We just ask that you keep updating because we're not forcing people to update the app when we have an update. That's going to come like any app. We want to make sure, hey, you've got an old version. So you know, before you can open it up, you have to go back to iTunes or Google Play, and you have to update it. So we'll get on that for sure. Um, it just it helps with everything. Seasonality, it'll help with national seasonality or national averages. So that's why people are doing are basically doing it. Here's the bottom line, and I, I do want to end this as quick as I can because it's, it's, it's the longest we've ever gone. Travelers are really changing, like I said early on. They're becoming more knowledgeable. I wanted to spend some time on this because I wanted to knock this out. I hope you guys can now see why I'm so darn excited about this, why this just made sense. Our challenge now is just to get it out to more people. And again, there's not that many people that watch this. We've got maybe a 1,000 travelers that maybe watch this and even will hear about this. But over time, this will stay up, and people will start to maybe you know move to this, and they'll see why we got so excited. And it'll be dated, so know if you're watching this and it's not June of 2023, that means more and more things are out there, more and more development, a lot more bells and whistles, so go check it out. I'm going to push it. I think you guys should check it out. I think it's an important variable for you to have because it does give you a barometer. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. Hear this. I shouldn't say I don't care because that sounds like I don't care, but I, it's not important that you go to work for us. If you have the app, it's going to help you 
see things that you're missing. It's going to show you some things that you're not getting from a current agency, which maybe will allow you to say, hey, this company's offering this. It may be able to help you negotiate a higher rate. It'll help you with you know, supply and demand and, and what markets are hot, what markets aren't. It'll give you a good barometer, if nothing else, so you can make better decisions on, on what you want to do. Obviously, we hope you use it, but I'm telling you, it's it's part of that. You guys are becoming more knowledgeable. There's there's a new, at more educated traveler, and they're not even maybe new. Our old travelers are becoming more educated, and our newer travelers are coming in with a little bit stronger education because of what the all you guys went through, and it's absolutely happening. I'll kind of finish up with this. Where we are right now is if you remember the first time you ever got into an Uber, I know I did, and I was like, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna get a stranger's car. I mean, really think about this. We forget so fast. I'm getting a stranger's car. I've got my credit card on file through an app. It was it, For me, it was weird. I felt like, I don't know about this. You know, I spent a lot of time in New York, and it seemed very strange. As soon as I took an Uber one time, I was addicted because I'm like, I'm never going to rent a car again. And I barely ever did, even on hockey trips with my son. There were times that it made no sense. Amazon's the same way. I remember the first time I ordered Amazon, my first reaction was, kind of like travelers thinking they need recruiters, I said, it's going to be more expensive. I'm not going to pay for that convenience. I was uninformed, and I didn't try it for a while because I was worried that, you know, you're gonna pay for that convenience. And I didn't think, you know, I didn't try it. So I, it turned out you don't. It turned out actually because of the bulk and the things that, you know, Bezos was doing, I was dead wrong. And once I got it, I, I'm telling you, first of all, I haven't been in, in a mall or, or, or a men's store in probably over a decade. And it's not to do with Amazon, but I don't, I don't ever, I shop online all the time if I need something, including things that I would buy in a grocery store or somewhere else. I use Amazon heavily because it's convenient it's so easy, and I, you know, I don't have to interrupt my day to go do stuff because I'm working so many crazy hours. It's the same concept. The people that don't think this is for them, I would say give it a shot. Try it, and then you tell me. Because I think you're going to find, especially as time goes by, that this is going to become more and more of a better solution for you if you can gain the confidence that you don't need to be led around by, again, and I'm just going to say it, Somebody that you don't know very well that's putting themselves and trying to tell you what you should be doing when only you know that. And they're also prioritizing all day based upon what helps them the most. Of course, they're helping you. There's some good people out there, but they're always thinking about themselves. They have to. There's no way around that. No matter how good of a person you are, you still are going to do the best you can for yourself. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's, it's, it's a human element that we think we need to get rid of in the, in the industry because it hurts people that aren't as marketable or strong as everybody else. It, it just does. So that's part of it. Um, the last thing I'll say, and this will be the end, is that agencies are, are going to try to figure out over the next few years how to stay competitive. A couple of predictions. I think there's going to be a lot of big people are going to try to gobble up more and more of the market and not share it out because they're going to want to hold it to themselves, which could hurt. They could make the margins as thick as they want, and they're going to try to monopolize that. If, And I don't know if this is true, but if travelers work less for them and more for a higher paying company, regardless of whether it's a recruiter or a recruiter list model, they'll have more and more difficulty doing that. So I don't know how that's going to pan out. But I do know that the big companies are probably going to try to move into that model. Let's try to, you know, model with everything and let's figure this out. I do think they're going to try to. Companies are going to try to go recruit us. They're going to try to figure out other ways and concepts that no one's even thought of yet that might even be better than this. That could happen too. But I will tell you that I still will say this is a fantastic time to be a traveler because it's your time. And this is why. Because finally, technology, whether it's us or a handful of us, is reaching travel healthcare and it's unavoidable once somebody starts doing it and more and more people start realizing that it is beneficial and only if those two things happen right then once those two things happen eventually it's going to start to become bigger for those companies and more and more people are going to be forced to thin their margins out by whatever way and means they can and start to jump on board and there's going to be agencies that are going to really struggle with that and some will have an easier time that's my prediction so they're they're going to try to make sure that they, they, they keep a competitive edge. And it's going to be more and more difficult for agencies to say they're competitive, competitive edges because we're a great company and we've got great recruiters. And that's what they always did. You hired the best people. And some of the best recruiters work for some of the best agencies, and they, they do well for them. But it's going to be harder and harder for those great people and those wonderful recruiters, and I feel sorry for them, to be competitive when they're constantly trying to sell pay packages that pale to what everybody else is going to be doing. It's just going to be in a matter of time. So... Okay, I think we can get that out of the way. We did. 
I'm looking forward to ending season two on the next episode. We're going to talk a lot about, I guess, where, we ha- where, we're, where we're at so far, what we've learned and things we've covered, and a preview of what we're going to be doing soon. We're going to reference Next Gen Med Seth like we kind of have recently, but we don't have to talk about it. You guys will get this episode. I may keep saying, check episode 99, just so that we can talk about the topics of nature that are there right now and not be talking about this. So this is why I did it. For those of you who got through this very, very long one or listened to it in parts, I can't thank you enough. I hope that it makes sense. I hope you know why now I am just driven and so happy. I'm happier than I've ever been. I'm more excited than I've ever been because it feels good. I, I, we're doing things differently than it's ever been done in the industry, and it's, it is traveler-focused, and it, everybody wins. It works, and this is why it makes sense, and this is why I, I literally can't stop working on this because I'm just that enthralled and excited about it because I know it's there. I know it's going to be great for you guys. I appreciate it. I'll catch you next time on Travel Evolved.